Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Stinchfield. That, of course, is President Trump in Arlington, Virginia today, paying his respects to the 13 fallen service members that never needed to die because of that disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. Today is the three-year anniversary of that disastrous withdrawal, which really amounted to murder because the so-called commander-in-chief, along with his henchwoman, Kamala Harris, ordered this withdrawal, meaning these 13 men and women that you see on your screen there never needed to die. And I think what is so sickening now three years later is that no one has taken accountability for this. No one has apologized for this. In fact, Biden Harris has now said that this was an operational success. An operational success? I don't think so. So where was Kamala Harris today? Nowhere to be found. There's President Trump in Arlington, Virginia, while Kamala Harris is apparently at the White House having uh, national security briefings, we're told, but not out in the public, paying their respects to those who paid the ultimate sacrifice for this country because of her horrible decisions. And remember, she claimed she was the last one in the room. So all of this is just, it's worse than disheartening, right? And some of the parents have been speaking out. They continue to speak out because they really want answers uh, out of all of this. These are the parents of Sergeant Darren Hoover um, that are, again, reiterating nobody within the United States government has really had any meaningful contact with them. Has, has anyone reached out to you from the administration? This is three years now and acknowledged, hey, um, we messed this up. Uh, we, we, we acknowledge the, uh, that the, the loss of your son is preventable. Is, has any of the people you mentioned at least acknowledged privately in any way in reaching out? Hey, we acknowledge what happened. Biden and Harris? No, of course they have not. They want this stuff under the rug. They want us to go away. Unfortunately for them, we're not going away. They deserve an acknowledgement. They deserve those in charge to be held accountable and say, one, we're sorry. Two, we're going to make sure this never happens again. And three, we will never, ever be able to repay you for your loss uh, in those brave men and women that were defending this nation in that faraway desert of Afghanistan. And yet still we have crickets and silence from the Biden-Harris administration. This is what they call an operational success. I just want to show you this video again three years later. These are Afghanis hanging on to giant cargo planes. That's the operational success. Not to mention, again, the three fallen, uh, 13 fallen service members that died that day. Here are the parents again talking about just how horrific this is. You know, the stumbling, bumbling buffoon that we have in the White House said what he said, had the audacity to say that under his watch, that no military members have, have died. And the rage and the, the absolute disgust that I got um, from hearing him say that, I started yelling back at the TV I, I, just out of frustration. Well, if you remember, Joe Biden did make that outrageous claim that no members of our military have died on his watch. Well, of course he doesn't remember. You remember he was looking at his watch on that tarmac as the bodies of these brave heroes were coming in in flag-draped coffins and Joe Biden is looking at his watch. That may have been the start where I knew this presidency was going downhill very fast and the nation was falling with it. And so this is what you expect. But I want to go back in time now and play an original clip from Kamala Harris. What does this say about her leadership when she laughs, when asked about the question of Afghanistan? This is going back nearly three years ago. Listen to Kamala Harris getting off Air Force Two. What's your response to a bunch of Americans? Hold on, hold on. Slow down, everybody. <laughs> um, I want to talk about two things. First, Afghanistan. That cackle is stomach churning. Can you imagine if you're a family member of one of these Marines and soldiers that died and you see the vice president cackling 
when asked about Afghanistan. And then, of course, Dana Bash asked her, were you the last one in the room? Were you part of this decision? Are you okay with it? Apparently she is. Biden always said that he wants you to be the last person in yeah. the room, particularly for big decisions, just as he was for President yeah. Obama. He just made a really big decision. Afghanistan. Yes. Were you the last person in the room? Yes. And you feel comfortable? I do. She feels comfortable? How do you feel comfortable after this? This was the worst military decision made by a commander in chief in the history of the United States of America because it didn't need to happen. The generals on the ground were saying, we've got to remain there. It's going to fall apart. Not to mention Bagram and the precious air base that that is so close to China, needing stability in the region. And we give that up. We're going to talk about that in a, in a little while. You consider what Kamala Harris is not saying today, nothing, go figure. And then compare that to President Trump, a man who, who takes this and puts it on his shoulders and takes this burden with him everywhere he goes, and he had nothing to do with this decision. Listen to President Trump. This month marks the three-year anniversary of the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country. Kamala and Crooked Joe's catastrophic withdrawal from Afghanistan has just been horrible for all of us. Three years ago, Kamala and Biden's incompetence left 13 dead warriors, hundreds of civilians killed and grievously wounded, and $85 billion worth of the finest military equipment on the planet abandoned to the Taliban, right into the hands of the Taliban. It also left 45 incredible soldiers so badly wounded, the legs, the arms, the face, obliteration. As Vice President Kamala bragged that she was the last person in the room. She was the tough one. She was the last person in the room during that disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan decision. She repeatedly praised the decisions, and she said it led to a catastrophe, but it was worth it. Let me ask you, how many mainstream media outlets are going to lead with this story tonight? Will NBC, will ABC, will MSNBC? No. They're going to hide it and they're going to bury it as the family members of, of those Marines and soldiers suffer. I'm going to play you one more clip from an ad President Trump released. It's more like a documentary than an ad. But you need to watch it and remember, three years later now, this again from President Trump's team. It will go down as one of the most disgraceful failures in America's history. A chaotic exit from Afghanistan left America's image tarnished and led to the tragic death of 13 American soldiers. We are coming on the air because the flag draped remains of the 13 fallen U.S. service members who were killed on Thursday in Afghanistan have now arrived back in the United States to Dover Air Force Base in Delaware. And news reports have now confirmed Biden didn't act alone. Kamala Harris was part of the incompetence and failure that led to the unnecessary deaths of the young men and women tragically killed. Afghanistan. Yes. Were you the last person in the room? Yes. And you feel comfortable? I do. But the tragedy for the families of these 13 fallen Marines didn't end there. To this day, Biden and Harris have refused to even say the names of these fallen soldiers who gave their lives for their country. They don't. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to pay their respects because I don't think they care about our men and women who put a flag on their shoulder and march into battle for us to protect this nation. I really don't think Joe Biden or Kamala Harris give a rat's you-know-what about them.